three masses twice. Okay. Hmm? And and we have this uh, factor of two because uh, we need to maintain the same beta ratio. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so no no no. So we assumed that mobility of the holes is one by half the mobility yes, of yes. the electrons. That is why two are. Yes, yes. Now, to get same delays, uh, same rise and fall delays, you make an inverter with the ratio 2 is to 1. Okay, yeah. So, that see. TMOS and NMOS both have same delay. Yes, sir. Okay. And then you can estimate the delay of an inverter by making an equivalent RC model. And you will notice that equivalent delay of a inverter is 6 RC. Can you work it out over here? So we are looking at delay from 0 to 1. What happens? NMOS is on, TMOS is off. So this particular resistance and capacitance completely goes out of picture. We only see this 2C. This 2C, C, C, and R and C. Now, this C is between ground and ground. So, this also capacitance goes out of picture. This is my final model. 1R and 6C. So, the delay of an inverter is 6RC. Uh, so, can you explain this whole thing again? So, do you remember this? This, yeah, this, one. Yeah. this MOSFET? The MOSFET says that there is a gate capacitance, there is source and drain capacitance, and there is a resistance. Yeah. I just put the same models for the NMOS and the PMOS over here, nothing else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what I've done is I've removed the invalid capacitances. Now this part is not in picture, so I've removed this part. And I've come to an equivalent circuit. Hmm. Okay, okay. So, the delay of this circuit is 6RC. Okay, but where did the... Um, so, we have placed one inverter, one after the other. But, so, for the second inverter, I mean, at node Y, we have just included the capacitances. Yeah. So, Why do we need to include anything else? It is only the gate load, no? Okay. If I have to measure the delay of this particular inverter, the output only acts as load, capacitive load. It's only going to the gate. Okay, Anderson. So for for load purposes, we only take the Yeah, you have to take the fan out for considering the load. Yeah. Hmm? So, sir. Yes, Raghav. So in the PMOS and NBOS, this RC model, you were showing three kind of capacitance ones for the source, the drain, and the gate. But while this, we are showing only the source and the drain capacitances and the gate, I'm not able to see how is gate model like, why is that gate in model? Yeah. You tell me, will, will there be any current that will flow through the gate? I mean, no, sir. No. Then why do I need to show it? The gate is somewhere here. It's here. Let this be here. How does it matter? So, but for the uh, second stage, the input gate capacitance will be parallel with this, right? Okay. 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 So we get the inverter delay to be six RC. Now a little complex gate. So, and you will notice that this RC model is actually reasonably accurate. Look at the SPICE model uh, and a very uh, shockly model. There are multiple models. So look at different models and you will see this is reasonably accurate. At least for at 50% at transition, this is very accurate. So back of the nerve calculations, this method should work fine. Okay. So now what about a three input NAND gate? Hmm? What will you do? Do you realize you will have to size it something like this? Hello? So to maintain huh? full propagation delay. I'm sorry? Uh, so we are sizing it in this way uh, just to maintain equal uh, propagation delay, right? 
Yes. We are sizing it like this so that it has an equivalent delay of an inverter only. Hmm. So now how will the delays move over here? First, first, are you able to see this is the equivalent inverter delay sizing? So if I make an, uh, you know, if, if, if I consider, if I consider that there are these three inverters in series, then by having three, I have resistances of R by three over here. Effective resistance is R. So this sizing of three means that I have the effective R on equivalent to a unit inverter. Are you able to see this? So now yes, that I have this size as three, how will my capacitance scale? They will scale something like this. Wherever it was two, it has I have two C. Wherever it was three, I have three C. Now again, what will I do? I will remove the redundant capacitances. Which are the redundant capacitances? The capacitances on the uh, input over here, for example, or or capacitance between ground and uh, uh, and and itself, or capacitance between VDD and itself. So those capacitances I will remove to simplify this and uh, this circuit. So how what happens? So this is my effective capacitance graph. Which ones are added? 2C, 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 so 6C and 3C. So 9C on the output. Huh? The other capacitances that are valid are these 3C capacitances. Are you with me? Hello? Yes, sir. Hmm? Now let us put the resistances also there. So a quick refresh. We know the Elmore's equation that to get propagation delay, I have to do sum of R I to source to C I. So R1 C1 plus R1 plus R2 C2 plus R1 plus R2 plus R N to C N. We remember this. Hmm? We already covered this in last or last to last class, Elmore's delay. So if we apply this on our equivalent circuit now, what happens? Let us say I have H copies on the output. So my load would be nine plus five HC. My resistances are R by three, R by three. Hello? Yes, sir. Are you with me? Hmm. So, what will be my uh, delay over here now? So TDR, propagation delay for rising. What, are, what is the rising condition? One of the N MOSs should be off and two of the P MOSs should be off. That will give me the worst delay. Am I right? So one of the P MOSs was on and I could get the TPDR as 9 plus 5 HRC because this is the only path. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Hmm? Now, what about the falling delay? So, falling delay, I have yes. these two capacitors also into picture, which need to be discharged before the output gets discharged. We will apply the Elmore's delay equation. And we will see that the falling delay is 12 plus 5 HRC. What did I do? I simply set this 3C from R by 3. Then this 3C from 2R by 3. Then this from R. You see? So answer I get is 12 plus 5 HRC. So one thing that is evident is that in a NAND gate, even if I have sized it equivalent to an to a regular inverter, the rise and fall delays will not be equal. Uh, the rise, the propagation delays for rise and fall will not be equal. Are you able to see this? Yes, sir. 
Huh? And uh, what about the contamination delay? For the PMOS side, it is very simple. All the three PMOSs have to turn on simultaneously. So the effective resistance would be R by three. And this would be the fastest that my output would toggle. Are you able to see this? Friends, it's not some Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what about the falling contamination delay? What happens there? So, falling contamination delay is your homework. You estimate the falling, falling contamination delay, the fastest delay that would get in contamination for the falling case. What would you do? We already discussed that for the two input NAND gate. For three input NAND gate, I'm giving it to you as homework. So you don't need to submit that homework, but just do it. Just to get more clarity for yourself. So what? how would you calculate the contamination delay for falling? So if the um, two uh, transistors below, I mean, if they are already been discharged. Yes, yeah. so these they, two, you will already turn them on. Yeah. So these capacitances, they will already be out of picture. Yes, and then only this will have to discharge. Okay. You will see it will come to be something similar only. Okay. Uh, sir, before yes. we move ahead, can we, uh, can we go back to when we derive the uh, RC models for PMOS and NMOS? Um, Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, I mean, can you just go over how we derive this particular model? Okay, forget about the term K over here. Okay. So, if I have a, if I have MOSFET and I say it is on, what all capacitances and uh, resistances do I have? I have a CD. I have a CG, hmm? I have a R on and I have a CS. Yes. So, yehi model hai, Nico. K bhool jao. Okay. So, this is CD, CS, and R on. Right, right. Okay. okay? Right. Okay. And uh, what's with the switch we have placed? Right? Yeah, the switch. The switch is the MOS switch. No, if, if the gate is at zero, the NMOS will not conduct. So this is an open connection then. Okay. okay. The drain and the source are not connected. That's all. And so CD and CS are basically diffusion capacitances. Of drain diffusion drain. plus overlap plus all that. Yes. The, all that we discussed. Yeah, but sir, if we are including the overlap, I mean, you mean gate to drain and gate to source. So what is the gate capacitance we are facing over Gate capacitance, so we did all that mass capacitance all cheese, na? So everything. Uh, sir, but we have included that in for our CD and CS, na? That um, gate to source capacitance. No, but, gate gate, to but gate to inversion layer capacitance will be there, na? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I know. Okay. So why did we cover all that? So it might be sounding like yeah, solid state devices cover, kar rahe hai, but you realize this is all very relevant to us. 